Okay, this section is about the cross product, and the cross product is a way of taking two vectors in three dimensions and multiplying them in some way to get a third vector. So we start with a and b. And the pro cross product is a way of, of multiplying a and b some way to give us um, a third vector vector that satisfies three special properties. And let me tell you what those are. First property is that it will be perpendicular to both A and B. Second thing is that its length will equal the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. And I'll explain what I mean by that uh, in a bit. So the third thing is that its direction satisfies the right-hand rule. And I'll also explain what I mean by that. So if I have two vectors in three dimensions, uh, they determine a plane by considering the origin and the three points. And so th there should be a specific direction that's perpendicular to all of these directions. So it's hard to draw it, but A is some vector going this way, and B is a vector going this way. you can see the sheet, but it's these vectors floating in three dimensions. A vector that's perpendicular to both of these will be the vector that's sticking out of the page that way, or another one is, is sticking under the page, like so. So as long as A and B don't point in the same direction, there always will be some vector that's perpendicular to both. And this is useful information, as we'll see when we study planes. All right, so the second item I, I told you before is that its length equals the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. And what I mean by the parallelogram determined by A and B is if I have A going this way and B going this way, the parallelogram they determined is, well, we look at, we look at A plus B is this diagonal, and it determines this parallelogram. Even if we have A and B floating in space like this, uh, they still determine a parallelogram like so. Um, and the magic property that this cross product will have is that its length will be the area of this thing. And the third item I already mentioned is that its direction satisfies the right-hand rule, but I haven't told you what the right-hand rule is. Uh, and as I mentioned before, if we have if we have two vectors floating in space, so here's A and here's B. As I mentioned, this vector coming out of the page is perpendicular to both, uh, but so is this vector pointing uh, behind the page this way. So. The third property that the cross product will satisfy is that, so if I point my fingers in the direction of A, sweep in the direction of B, my thumb will be pointing in the direction that the cross product will point. So in this picture, the cross product will point this way instead of into the page this way. One consequence of this is that if I were to take B cross A, this will be the negative of A cross B. Why is that? So if I have this vector A pointing that way, the cross product of A cross B will be will point in this direction, but if I point in the direction of B first and then go in the direction of A, I'll be pointing into the page, so it'll be the opposite direction. So those are the three properties that the cross product will satisfy. 
and it has some complicated formula which takes a lot of build-up to go through. So to do that I have to tell you about determinants. And determinants really belong in a course on linear algebra, so I can't tell you too much of what, uh, why they appear here, but there are very good reasons why. Let me start with 2 by 2 determinant. So I have this grid, this 2 by 2 grid of numbers, A, B, C, D, and I write these bars here to mean the determinant of this and the definition of this is AD minus BC. So for example, if I have 1, 2, negative 2, 5, I'll have 1 times 5 minus 2 times negative 2, which gives me 5 plus 4 is 9. Now, a 3 by 3 determinant, let me tell you what that is. So now I have a 3 by 3 grid of numbers. Uh, the definition of this, well, we define it using uh, some 2 by 2 determinants. This is going to be, and, well, since I'm not telling you why it's defined this way, it might seem a little mysterious why we have this minus sign, uh, but there are important reasons that we don't have time to talk about. But nevertheless, you shouldn't, you should not forget to put that in there, or else many things won't work. So, if I want to find the determinant of this, So that's just rewriting it, and then in the end, you get negative 3. And now, without further ado, let me give you the formula for the cross product. So, A cross B, its formula is given by the following determinant. And now this might look a little strange because determinants, I was just saying, were defined using numbers here. But i, j, and k are not numbers, they're vectors. But we just apply the same symbolic formula to compute the cross product. So what I mean by this, and that's the definition of a cross product. So since i, j, and k tell us the components of a vector, the first component will be this, the second component will be negative this, and the third component will be that. Let me do an example with actual numbers. So suppose I want to take the cross product of 3, 0, negative 1 and 1, 2, 2. Again, the formula is this. So I have i times this determinant Let me compute all of these numbers. This will be 0 minus negative 2, so it's just 2. This is 6 minus negative 1, so it's 7. And this is 6 minus 0. Gives you 6. So there I've rewritten it, and so it's i times 2 minus j times 7 plus k times 6, and using the regular component notation, this is just 2, negative 7, and 6. So that's the cross product of these two things, and again we should remember what this is supposed to represent. We have these two vectors in three dimensions. The cross product is a third vector that's perpendicular to both. Its length should be the area determined by the area of the parallelogram determined by the two vectors and its direction is given by the right hand rule. So that's what this represents, but uh, now you know how to, how to compute it.